Hello. And hello. We've been north, south, and east on our Meet the Germans road trip. I'm just kidding. That's what it says right there. Um, yeah. I'm looking forward to this final part of the Meet the Germans road trip by DW Euromax. Go check them out. <gasps> we'll link down below. It's pretty epic so far, and I'm very interested to cap it off with the West. Let's just go. We've been north, south, and east on our Meet the Germans road trip. Hey, I just said that. So today it's time to find out what the West- Cringe that she's stealing my line. West has to offer. The final four states that we'll be visiting are Nordrhein-Westfalen, Rheinland-Pfalz, Hesse- There's too many states for me to remember. Like these names are so confusing. Except this one, Hessen. I'll remember that one, Hessen. And Saarland. Let's start with a little- I can only imagine what it's like to try to remember all 50 US states for people not from America. 2000 year throwback. The Rhine River in Germany once marked a frontier of the Roman Empire. Not that the Romans didn't want to go any further, but the so-called barbarian Germanic tribes mostly held them off. Roman influence <laughs> west of the Rhine can still be spotted today in aqueducts, amphitheaters, and bathhouses. Wow. Perhaps the most famous Roman remains are here in Trier, which is thought to be Germany's oldest city. The Porta Nigra Black Gate was built in the second century under the reign of Marcus Aurelius. The Romans gave my hometown of Cologne the very catchy name Colonia Claudia Ara Agrippinensium. These days, the oh city God. is better known for its pretty extraordinary Gothic cathedral. <laughs> what is that? Cathedral. And Dude, I want to go back to the time period when stuff like this was built. That's when I would want to live in Germany. That's insane. And Carnival. Is this like the German equivalent of fraternities and sororities? The so-called fifth season kicks off on Elfte Elfte, the 11th of the 11th at exactly 11.11 a.m. Oh, I like that. It rises to a crescendo, usually in February, with a six-day extravaganza of sleep parades. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What is this? What was it? I need to know what it's called. Elfter, Elfter? Is that just 11.11? <laughs> How cool. Here in America, people say, like, it's 11.11, make a wish. But that's about it. At exactly 11 11 a.m., the extravaganza of wow. sleep parades, I need to costumes, react to this. dance performances, music, <laughs> and plenty of drinking. <laughs> That's the tiniest little bottle. I know it's a shot. Traditionally, this was all about letting loose before six weeks of fasting for Lent. Why is she a strawberry? These days, it's all about Lebensfreude. Spaß haben. Feiern. Party. Also, it's a feeling. Wir kommen aus Hessen, bei uns heißt es Fasching. <laughs> yeah. Schön schon Zeit im Jahr. It reminds me of like Mardi Gras here in America, where I don't even know why we celebrate it, but it it's pretty much just about partying. Weil bedeutet einfach Leben. Ausbrechen. Mm. Den Alltag hinter sich lasse, in ein anderes Kostüm zu schlüpfen und einfach mal die Sorge vergesse und die Sau rauslasse. The people of the Rhineland are often labeled the most open, friendly and... Let this guy's smoking. So the Rhineland, that's where the friendly Germans are. Hmm. Okay. So if I'm going to go visit Germany, I might go to the Rhineland so you guys don't judge me too much. I'm just interested that this guy's smoking. Party ready people in Germany. So no wonder they throw themselves into their Fasta Love and festivities. Nordrhein-Westfalen wow. is Germany's most populous state and accounts for one fifth of Germany's What the heck is that? Economic output. The we can't even get like a normal Germany's train here in America. State and, and you guys have upside down ones. That's ridiculous. It's not fair. One fifth. That would be fun. I would pay just to Germany's ride that in a circle. Output. These days, the main industries are machinery, electronics, cars, plastics, Whoa. and chemicals. But the state was heavily shaped by the industrial revolution, coal mining, and steel production. The Ruhr area, also known as the Ruhrpott... I'm guessing there's not much coal mining going on in Germany anymore. ...or simply the pot, was one of the most important industrial regions in Europe. The identity of the Bergmann or miner became a huge part of the region's huh. identity. Well, as the industry continued to grow, so-called guest work... That's still, it's kind of that way here still in Indiana. There's a lot of coal miners who look just like that and 
a lot of people identify with it. You know, go, go coal. <laughs> Yay, coal. Workers were also brought in from other countries to keep up with demand. But by the late 50s, it's a very dangerous job. 50s, cheaper fuel had hit the market. As coal plants were shut down, <clears throat> the government tried to create alternative employment opportunities, for example, in new car factories. Billions of That's good, because there's a lot of cities here in America where something like a coal plant was what basically fueled the whole economy, and then it got shut down, and now it's, um, it's like Gary, Indiana. Euros have since been poured into regeneration projects in the region, with a focus on education, culture, and nature. Many industrial sites have been repurposed for museums and communal spaces, like this park here in Duisburg. So, has regeneration been a success? Ich denke schon, man sich anguckt. Hold on, hold on. I got a text. I'm curious now if people, like, elsewhere in the world, if you guys are getting these spam texts. I mean, I have no idea who this is. They say, let me know when you're off and we'll get lunch together. Uh, how about not? How about I block you? I'm reacting to a video. Please don't ever text me again. But I'm pretty sure it's a scam. And, like, they used to... It used to be really obvious when you were getting a scam text or call. Now, now they're getting pretty good. Anyway. So, has regeneration been a success? Okay, sorry. Okay, we're talking about how regeneration from them shutting down the coal. Spaces, like this park here in Duisburg. So, has regeneration been a success? I think it's when you look at it, how it was before, that it was all full of industry. Was jetzt ja ziemlich grün ist. Ist noch nicht abgeschlossen, meiner Meinung nach, weil viele Dinge äh, noch ähm, im Prozess sind. Das kulturelle Angebot, ich kann nicht alles wahrnehmen, aber wenn ich sehe, es ist, es ist auch im öffentlichen Raum ähm, spürbar, es ist was zu sehen, äh, das gefällt mir. Was macht heutzutage die Ruhrbot-Identität aus? I, I mean, that's a really difficult thing to accomplish, right? Replacing an entire area's economy, basically. That's, you can't just like snap your fingers and do it. You can't just be like, oh yeah, let's just do that. Die Vielfalt, was für Nationalitäten wir haben. Es gibt viele Kunst und die Leute sind sehr freundlich. Sie sind einfach äh, bodenständig geblieben und identifizieren sich total mit den Fußballvereinen, ich sag mal, mit Football dem, was hier im Grünen passiert. Ich würde sagen, der Zusammenhalt, das merkt man Ruhrgebiet auch extrem. Wow. That kid, I think that kid's like 14 years old. Mit dem, was hier im Grünen passiert. Ich würde sagen, der Zusammenhalt, das merkt man. Very well spoken. Either that or he just um, doesn't have any facial hair. Man Ruhrgebiet auch extrem. But I'm just impressed by how well he speaks. German is usually pretty literal, so I really... And kids here, in, like 14-year-old kids here in America are like, Yo, bro, um, yeah, bro, I, I don't even know, bro. We, I don't even know what's going on here. Enjoy the rather cryptic names given to many dishes in this part of the country. Himmel und Erd, heaven and earth, is blood sausage, mashed potato, and apple sauce. You know, I was hungry until I heard the word blood sausage. And earth is blood sausage, mashed potato, and apple sauce. Halva Han, half a chicken, is a rye bread roll with a slab of cheese on top. <laughs> That's it. And what about blind? Sounds food? good. Blind chicken. That's a vegetable and bacon stew. Duh. Herzdrigger is Pfalz dialect for heart pusher, which could refer to the cardiological effect of these meat and potato dumplings or the fact that locals are particularly <laughs> fond of this dish. But sometimes the Hessians call a spade a spade. This is the very accurately named Grüner Sauce, green sauce. What to be it? more exact, it's a sour cream and mixed herb sauce often served with boiled potatoes and eggs. Now that sounds fantastic. As a cider lover, I've also been dying to try another Hessian speciality. Ebelwoi, literally apple wine. Oh my god. See, that's girly enough. I would love this. Apple wine. I want that. I like ciders too. It's an alcoholic drink made from sour apples. Ooh. And it's usually served in a jug like this one called a bembel. Oh my god, I want it. Whoa, not as sweet as the cider I know. <laughs> I think I could get used to it. Damn it! Damn <laughs> Mineralwasser rein, ist ja nicht ganz so stark. Mm. Und dann gibt es wieder andere, die machen sich Limonade rein. Das ist aber unter Apfelweintrinkern eigentlich fett. It's frowned upon <laughs> to add lemon. Burn. Something I really like about Germany is that not everything is sent. It's so funny to me how people care about like what other people do, like drink and stuff. <laughs> Especially drink. Like, it's one thing if you care about what other people do. But why do people judge me for drinking Mike's Hard Lemonade? God, do you guys know what that is? It's like the girliest drink. 
centred around the capital city. Different industries have hubs in different places. Even political institutions are spread between Berlin and the former West German capital Bonn. And Bonn. Germany's financial centre is Frankfurt. Frankfurt am Main, to give it its full name, is home to many domestic and foreign banking institutions, as well as the European Central Bank and Germany's largest stock exchange. It has the country's busiest airport and 18 of Germany's 19 skyscrapers. I've reacted to Frankfurt. Earning it the nickname Mainhattan. Incidentally, here the buildings don't scrape the sky, they scratch the clouds. Wolkenkratzer. <laughs> they scratch the clouds. Really? Is that really one? That's the translation of a skyscraper? A cloud scratcher? Beneath the surface of suits and skyscrapers, Frankfurt has an underground claim to fame as one of the birthplaces of techno music. Here gab es sehr früh wow. eine sehr komplette, komplexe Szene. Hier gab es die Clubs, aber auch die Produzenten. Die I was thinking the other day, I was listening to um, a, a song um, I used to listen to a lot. It was by Bass Hunter. I was like, I wonder if the Germans like Bass Hunter. Ich bin ein Boot, ein Boot in Anna, Anna. Okay, okay. Die Musiker, die Labels, Plattenläden und so weiter. Anfang der 80er Jahre gab es vielleicht fünf, sechs Städte weltweit, ähm, die diesen Status zu. I'm not surprised you guys invented techno, by the way. Gab es vielleicht fünf, sechs Städte weltweit, ähm, die diesen Status zu der Zeit hatten. Kannst du irgendwie schätzen, warum das hier stattgefunden hat? Einer der Gründe ist mit Sicherheit das Dorian Gray. Also in dem Club lief schon immer das Innovativste vom Innovativen. Mhm. Der war am Frankfurter Flughafen. Allein der Ort, auch die Fahrt dorthin, da fährt also über die Autobahn. Es ist Nacht und der Flughafen ist nachts beleuchtet gewesen. Man hat ihn schon von weitem so pulsierend gesehen. Man ist you can see the whole building literally pulsating. Zugefahren und dann runter unter den Flughafen gefahren. I wouldn't go in there if the whole thing's pulsating. Äh, das war eigentlich schon, da ging es schon los, dass man gespürt hat. Hier passiert heute Nacht was. Über Frankfurt wird nicht mehr so viel gesprochen. Das hat damit zu tun, dass diese Räume, diese Clubs einfach fehlen. Oh. Hier gibt es nicht viel Raum. Deswegen wird in Frankfurt auch in die Höhe gebaut. Und wenn irgendwo ein Raum frei wird, die Mieten sind extrem hoch. Deswegen ist Berlin auch heute wahrscheinlich World Capital of Techno. Oh, Berlin the capital of Techno now. Got it. Durch den Mauerfall haben sich einfach Räume ergeben. Das heißt, die Leute konnten ob es alte Lagerhallen waren, ähm, alte E-Werke, Gaswerke, mit diesen Räumen. I, I wouldn't have taken this guy to see him walk down the streets as some kind of techno expert. Nun kann man auch erst was Neues entwickeln. Germans are always surprising you. Und das haben wir hier leider in der Stadt nicht so. If you need an escape from the city, Hessen also has you covered. Quite literally. This state and neighboring Rheinland. I want to climb that tree. That is a perfect climbing tree are both 42% covered in trees. Hmm. That makes them Germany's most foresty states and the perfect spot for a fairy tale. Einem reichen Manne, dem wurde seine Frau krank und als sie fühlte, dass ihr Ende herankam, What's going on? Jakob Is she like summoning a ghost? Bob and Wilhelm Grimm, better known as the Brothers Grimm, were born in Hanau in the late 18th century and later moved here to Kassel. They gathered folk stories for their fairy tale collection. What the heck? Hansel and Gretel. This is Willy Wonka. Gretel, Snow White, Little Red Riding Hood, Cinderella. But we're talking the original gory versions before Disney toned things down. The brothers also play. They were gory? I mean, I know she like put them in the oven and eats them. Played an important part in the development of the German language. Jakob published a book on German grammar, and the brothers later began working on a very that? ambitious German dictionary. Sadly, they never made it past the letter F. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they got pretty far, sort of. <laughs> I mean, if you make it to letter F, I feel like you, what? That's probably like a million German words in just F alone. That would be really hard to make a German dictionary. How many words are there in German? Wilhelm died in 1859 and Jakob four years later. Is that why there's an F there? <laughs> That's where they got. Later, the last entry to commemorate their, their dictionary. He completed was for Froteufel. Froteufel. Demon. But other linguists picked up where they left off and the tome was eventually completed about oh, 100 wow. years later. A hundred years. Yeah, my, that's uh, my point exactly. Our next Took stop years. is Saarland, the smallest German state, excluding the three city states. In fact, it's often used. Holy shoot! How fast do scooters go in Germany? 
Land, the smallest German state, excluding the three city-states. In fact, it's often used as a unit of measurement in the German media. For example, a forest fire affected an area the size of Saarland. For those of you unfamiliar with this unit, it's about the same size as neighboring Luxembourg. Not all that long ago, Damn. this German state used to be essentially independent, with its own constitution, its own flag, and even a very short-lived... These, like, courtyards... That's something that America just doesn't have much of. It's always sort of interesting to see it. Just a big courtyard of bricks. Currency, the Zahmark. Zahland sent its own team to the 1952 Olympic Games and the 1954 Football World Cup qualifiers, where incidentally it was knocked out. The dudes playing looked so old back then. I mean, some of them. 1954 Football World Cup. Like this dude looks like he's like 50. <laughs> World Cup qualifiers, where incidentally it was knocked out by West Germany, who went on to win the tournament. Oh. This historical curiosity had a lot to do with the region's attractive coal reserves and the two world wars. This part of Germany fell under the administration of the League of Nations after World War I. Then it was returned to Germany. Then it was in the French occupied. I don't know what the League of Nations is. Zone after World War II, when France gave it protectorate status, effectively releasing it from Allied control. But the region's strong connection to Germany remained, and in a 1955 referendum, the people voted to be released from their special arrangement with France. In 1957, they officially joined West Germany. So, is this history still visible today? Auf jeden Fall. Das Saarland ist praktisch das französischste aller deutschen mm. Bundesländer, kann man sagen. Man geht hier kein Baguette holen, man holt sich Flüt. Ein schmaleres Baguette. Das ist so typisch französisch. Ich finde, man sieht es auch noch so ein bisschen manchmal an den Bauten. It's kind of funny for me to think the French influence of a German state because I just, French, I'm surprised you guys are even bordering each other because the Fran France, French people and German people seem so different to me. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's just how it seems to me, like they're just so different. Dass da so Französisch mit reinspielt. Der Regenschirm wird im Bereich Saarlouis immer nur. Ich hole And the language sounds completely different. Bei Parapluie. Und das ist im Grunde le Parapluie, der Regenschirm. Oh, Wir well, haben hier except for eine that. Sprachgrenze, eine europäische Sprachgrenze zwischen hmm. Rheinfränkisch und Moselfränkisch. Und die wird Jive und Trive, wird die auch oh, so wow. gesprochen. Als Franzose, heute ich meine Muttersprache war, Platt, Platt. Platt. Und selbst in Frankreich sind wir manchmal als. Als, uh, oh, die Deutsche betrachtet. Also als so, so Deutsche, verstehen Sie, so, so Saar-Franzose. I like how this is just like tearing apart my preconception. Betrachten, ne? That French people and German people are so different. Man hört das ja auch, dass hier viele Franzosen sind. Ich weiß, dass das halt ganz nah ist, aber ich fühle mich da jetzt überhaupt nicht irgendwie hingezogen oder so. Mich damit irgendwie verbunden. Und was sollte man sonst noch über das Saarland wissen? Prinzipiell, dass es das Bundesland gibt. Hier gibt's ja... <lacht> I know now that it exists. Yes, mission accomplished. Sehr gutes Essen. Ich esse gern Leona. Das ist so eine Wurst. Ooh, Leona. Oh, I thought she said a kind of sauce. A, a kind of sausage, of course. Saarland ist definitiv äh, bekannt für Schwenker. Hier wird nicht gegrillt, hier wird geschwenkt und man isst hier kein Steak. Man isst... Oh, that means something else here in America. Ein Schwenker. We've managed to get pretty far in this episode without mentioning beer. There's plenty of Pilsner Good in the point. West, and then Cologne's got its Kölsch, and nearby Kölsch. Düsseldorf has its Alt. Alt. German beer is known the world over, but a slightly better kept secret is German wine. Around two thirds of all German- I wish it wasn't better kept secret. And wine comes from Rheinland-Pfalz, and the absolute front runner is the Riesling variety. Dotted along the Mosel River between quaint villages and hillside castles, you'll find row after row of seriously steep vineyards. I guess it kind of makes sense because France is known for wine. You know, this is like the most Frenchy part of Germany. Um, am I, am I, am I uh, making sense here? Das Besondere am Moselwein ist natürlich unsere einzigartige Kulturlandschaft und was eben den Charakter des Weines auch auszeichnet, ist der Schiefer. Es ist ein sehr dunkler Stein und schwarz, wie wir alle wissen, kann ja auch sehr gut Wärme speichern, zieht Wärme an. Und uh, right now, all I'm thinking about is that video, uh, Grape Lady Falls. If you haven't seen that video, Grape Lady Falls, go watch it. You're welcome. Wenn es nachts wieder kälter wird im Tal, dann gibt er das an die Umgebung ab, eben an unsere Trauben. Damals habe ich mich zur Wahl der Moselweinkühnen gestellt, weil ich mein, meine, meine Heimat so sehr liebe und ähm, da eben unterwegs sein wollte. 
im Auftrag des Weines. Ich habe ehrlich gesagt gar nicht so weit gedacht, dass es dann noch weitergeht zur deutschen Weinkönigin. 2016, 2017. Oh, wow. Ich im Endeffekt einmal um die ganze Welt reisen. I didn't know they were being serious. Mit deutschen Wein im Gepäck. Was macht eine gute Riesling aus? <lacht> Ein guter Riesling macht natürlich das gute Moselklima aus. Dann sollte er eine schöne Süße haben, also nicht zu süß, ein bisschen und dann natürlich die knackige, frische Säure, die den Mosel Riesling auszeichnet. Oh my god, that's so cool. She's like a wine connoisseur and the queen of wine. So, what's the best way to sample? That's a really small glass. Oh, it's a sample. All the local produce. Well, you could go on a wine wanderung or wine hike. Yep, that yes. involves hiking between vineyards I'll do it. and wine taverns. I'll do it. Whew. It would just be a matter of convincing my wife to, but if I told her wine is involved, Should we do it? The more relaxed variation would be to do a vine forber or wine tasting, which traditionally goes from dry to sweet. What else do you like about this area of Germany? Leave a comment below. And that brings us to the end. Everything. I like the people. You, because I know you're from West Germany. Actually, I don't know that. Um, <sighs> I'm gonna go eat McDonald's, guys, because I'm American. And it's lunchtime. So, of course, I am. Um, have a fantastic day. Thank you for watching. That concludes this, this road trip. Wow. Amazing. Great series by DW Euromax. I hope I see you guys again tomorrow. Or the next day.